Hello everyone, Wolfie here, coming at you with another one. Now, in this one here, we're going to be going over how to change your NAT type on PS4. Now, some of you may have seen another video that I put out a while ago where I did something similar, but this one, unlike that one, is going to be going way more in-depth as to how you can change the NAT type of your PS4, and we're actually going to go for the NAT types as well. So how NAT type works is there are actually different NAT types that you could possibly have, which you may you may know. There's NAT type 3, there's NAT type 2, and then there's NAT type 1. So how does NAT type 3 work? NAT type 3, you'll normally get whenever it is that you're on a network of some sort, like uh, let's say you're in a college dorm room and you're connecting to the college's network through the port they have on the wall, or maybe they have Wi-Fi, that'll usually be a NAT type of three that you'll get from that. Also, three could possibly be like you're connecting off of a hotspot or satellite internet as well can give you a NAT type of three with the device that you're using or your PlayStation 4 since that is what we're talking about here. So that's a NAT type of three. Now for a NAT type of three, if you need to change that, what you need to do is you, you may be able to do what I'm going to list here, but at the same time, you may possibly not be able to do it. It depends on your specific internet connection and how it works. So you may be able to do this or you may not. I'd recommend trying this first, uh, seeing if you're able to do it. But if not, what you're going to want to do is you're probably going to want to contact your network administrator um, if you're at a college and you're in a room, that's probably what you're going to need to do and they'll be able to do what it is that I'm going to show you because you might not be able to do it yourself. The network administrator might have access to it only or uh, your internet company depending on what it is that you're connecting through. So that's a NAT type of three. Now for a NAT type of two, a NAT type of two is usually you'll have your cable modem and your cable modem will be attached to a router and you, the way you connect is by connecting to that router which is going to your cable modem and you could be connecting through using a wire, uh, an ethernet cable or it could be Wi-Fi. Either way will usually give you a NAT type of two. There are some exceptions though where it may not necessarily show up as a NAT type of two and well, what we're going to go over here will help you to fix it so that if it's showing up as a three, for instance, doing this will most likely allow you to change it to a NAT type of two. Now, for a NAT type of one, how that works is uh, there's no router. We're getting rid of that. And there's just your cable modem, the internet box given to you by the internet company, which you plug into in order to have high-speed internet. So if your console, your PS4, is connected to that box directly, then what should show up is a NAT type of one. And in the background here, you can actually see that for me, it says I have a NAT type of two, meaning that I'm connected through a router, which is then connected to that internet box, which was sent to me by the internet company. So that's a lot to take in. Feel free to go back and rewatch anything, uh, any of the parts. If you need an explanation again, or it didn't quite state the first time, feel free to do that. So how do we actually change our NAT type then? Let's go ahead and get to that now. So in order to change your NAT type, what you're going to want to do is you're either going to want to try port forwarding, and I'll be going over both of these methods that I'm mentioning. There's port forwarding, and then there's another one using a DMZ. So let's go ahead and go over port forwarding first. Now, how port forwarding works 
is the PlayStation itself, it actually uses certain ports and those ports may possibly be closed on your router or if you're connected with a NAT type of three through one of the ways which you're connected, whether it be the dorm room at your college, university, or satellite and so forth. So let's go over how you can open up these ports that are needed by your PlayStation. So in order to open up the ports, what you're going to want to do is you need to know the IP address for the device that you're using. So if you're using a router, what you need to do is you need to find the IP address for your router. Now, in order to find out your IP address, what you need to do is you need to use the device that you're connected to the internet through and search for it through that. So for instance, I have a computer here. Uh, you could be on a laptop and so forth. What you're going to do is this is the way that I do it. I open up command prompt. And if you don't know what that is or how that works, just follow along and you'll understand. I'll walk you through it. So basically hit the windows button and in the search box, type in command prompt and you're going to click on that. Now, once that pops up and you click on it, next, what you're going to do is you're going to type in IP config and hit enter. Now, once you do that, you'll see a whole bunch of information has now popped up in the box. So I'm going to look over at my box now and the information that you need in order to access your router or your internet point, the gateway is going to be listed under default gateway. So it's normally 192.168.1.1 point one or it can be different but that's normally what it'll be around for most routers out there so now what you're going to do is you're actually going to take that number and you're going to put it into your internet browser so i'm actually going to change my background here so that you can see where it is that you need to put it in and what you're going to be doing next now your screen may not look exactly like this because everyone has a different router and the chances that your router is exactly the same as mine the chances of that are actually pretty slim so what you'll be looking at won't look exactly like what i'm looking at necessarily it's possible that it might but there's a good chance that it may look completely different but you should be able to figure it out so that you can follow along with me here as we're going through it. All right, so now that I've got my browser open here, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take that default gateway and I'm going to enter it into where my internet address bar is. We're going to put that in there and then we're going to hit enter. So go ahead and do that right now alongside with me. So 192, once we enter it, we're going to hit enter and it'll take a few seconds for the page to load and the page that you have should look a little something like this here now like i said it may be different depending on your specific router but it'll be along the same lines in the middle here we have login username and password so now you're going to have to figure out what your username and your password is the information can be found on a sticker that should be somewhere on your modem, whether it be underneath, on the side, the back. So be sure to give your modem a good look see so that you can find out the information. And what we're going to do next is once you have the information, you're going to go ahead and enter it. So I'm going to do that right now and we're going to move on to the next step. All right. So I've entered the information and it'll say something like this. This page is loading. So we're going to have to give it a minute so then it finishes loading. So now what you're going to have in front of you is a page which should look something a little like this. And remember, depending on your specific modem, it won't look exactly like this. The colors on the page may be different or the layout may be completely different, but this is generally what it should look like. Basic setup. Okay, so now that we're here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to look for port forwarding. It should be somewhere in your settings. So go ahead and find that. And we're going to go ahead and jump on into the next step. 
So for me, port forwarding is under firewall. And then over here, virtual servers. And right here, it says port forwarding. So what ports are we going to need to forward to for the PlayStation? You can find that by looking it up. Or if you have your PlayStation manual, the ports are actually listed in the manual. But you can look it up online, which is actually what I'm going to do right now. Now, my internet works just fine, and I don't actually need to do this. But I'm going to give you an idea of how it works and what you need to do by showing you it here right now. So we're going to go ahead and hit add. And then we have all this here that we need to fill out. So let me go ahead and actually pull up the information from PlayStation right now. And we'll go ahead and fill out one of them. So you'll have a general idea of how you're going to fill out all the other ones as well. So you don't need to fill anything out for description. We're just going to put in 80 here, 80 in the next one and TCP, then for private IP address, this is going to be the IP address for your PS4. And if you want to find out what that is for your PS4, go into your settings on your PS4, right around where you test your internet connection. And down at the bottom there, there should be an option there that says internet connection settings. And the IP address that shows up there, which is listed, that's what you're going to want to put into the box here. That's the IP address for your PlayStation 4. And then for a local port down here, we're going to go ahead and put an 80 again. And then once we're done with that, you're going to select add or just hit enter. And you're going to want to do that for all of the ports that the PlayStation uses. And there are multiple ports. so. I'm just giving you an idea of how to get through adding all of the ports. I'm not going to go through and add all of them. This should point you in the right direction when it comes to adding the other ones. But once you finish adding all of those other ports, you can go ahead and test your NAT type again. And it should show that your NAT type has now been changed. And there you go. That's how you can change your NAT type on PS4. Now, if this video helped you out, I'd appreciate it so much if you could leave a like and subscribe. I'm Wolfie, and I'll see you next time. Bye.